Well, thanks for staying with us. Mr. Fatai Awodishini joins us to get a better understanding of what you have just seen. He is essay to the Governor of Oyo State on Security. Thanks for joining us this morning, Mr. Awodishini. Well, in yeah, the first morning. place, yeah, uh, your job is not easy, no doubt. <laughs> but um, uh, this, a number of people are wondering, how did this even happen in the first place? Can you please give us a background? Exactly what happened, and did we see this coming? Yeah, well, let me first um, start by saying it is what it is. I'm not in position to give a background as to how it happens because I don't work there, okay. and I'm not um, one of the correctional officers. Um, they should be able to give, um, um, you, you know, um, information as to how did it happen, but. Um, if we just want to generalize, the Yoruba people says, um, that is, if your neighbors, your family members are dying, um, you should also, um, you know, mysteriously, you should also uh, not let your guts down. This is not the first um, jailbreak we're going to have this year in this country. Um, not just only this year. And when things happen like that, you probably take um, precautionary measures in other places. Um, that's the way I would put it. Did we do that? Did the correctional um, facilities, the um, management, um, were they able to do that? If those things were done, what were the results? And of course, um, going to that facility yesterday, if a threat or risk analysis um, had been carried out, 100% from professional security angle, that facility would be classified as most vulnerable. And that's um, the way how I put it. Ellie, one would say that it was just an evil marking time that would eventually happen but on the front pages of the of the papers this morning we we heard you know what you what someone says that ascribed to the presidency that coordinated attack on prisons is uh, it's coordinated consequently perhaps there is a script being played um for such crimes you will call it coordinated and organized crime it is not something that just suddenly happened. It's don't, um, it doesn't happen randomly. There'll be a lot of efforts that have been put in by those who carried out um, the crime. Um, and of course, for uh, as per experience, you will also say such thing uh, will happen without some element also inside knowing, especially um, some of the inmates. How much monitoring do they have in place, especially in a country where we say most of our correctional facilities um, are overwhelmed. Um, do, have we even done anything in the course of our investigations, all the uh, previous jailbreaks um, that would say we are investigating? What are the results of those investigations? And of course, when you also have most of the security institutions being on the defensive, most of the times things happen like this. Um, they probably will not come up with something that will be implicating of um, the personnel that work there. Uh, like I've mentioned, um, how many correction officer do we have to an inmate? Um, that particular facility, how many inmates should it have taken? How many do we have there? And um, all these things are supposed to have come into focus um, a very long time ago. But with everything in institutions in this country, institutions are neglected. And I must say, I'm not uh, preaching for the um, correctional institution. That institution is um, one of the critical um, institutions when you talk of criminal justice administration. And how much are they carried along? in what they are doing. Um, the officers, how much motivation is given to them 
Um, I met a police service when I joined. Um, I'll give you two examples. You have the um, fella Nicola Pokuti, may so rest in peace, um, expensive shit case. What do you mean by what do they mean by expensive shit? Is to monitor things. When fella was arrested and he was said in pidgin English to say, Oh, I will suffer these people that will not see exhibit. They had some detectives who volunteered, who the criminals don't know, who were in the cell with um fella Ransom Kuti, who says, you know, they volunteered themselves because then motivation was high. Um, two, three days. Fella did not go to toilet. And as of the time he went to toilet, these volunteers were the people that parked the shit. And that was how they were able to detect the exhibits. That is why they call it expensive shit. Odozi Obodo's case was also there in those days um, in the Eboye State now, where that fellow was killing people. Some detective volunteer to be Babala was working, Abalis working for him. These are things that. Um, some other countries we do when uh, personnel are highly motivated that when you have high risk um, inmates some people will volunteer to be there they will check whether they are using telephone um, when people come to visit them um, they would also check their telephone how much conversation and we are now talking to the element which is also critical involvement of the community um, it's been said that no criminal can be bigger than the community. They didn't just go with those explosives there at that time. They must have been, have been hanging around the community. And that is why in the state, we've been talking of, um, you know, raising up the non-state actors for voluntary policing sector. So how okay, much but, but Mr. Oshin, we'll talk about what the states, we'll talk about what the states can do uh, in a moment. But when you refer to the community, uh, and yes, you also said it's not the first that this first time this is happening. Remember, recently there was Owerri, uh, then there was Benin, Kaba, now Oyo, and government seems to have the same kind of response time and again. But doesn't this this can be people look at the cycle and they feel if you want the community to come in here, how are they going to do that? Because at the end of the day, they feel look if people that we blew the whistle on have got out, they come out to threaten us. Why should they? involve themselves in ensuring that these kind of things happen or don't happen. Uh, Chamberlain, I'll go back to what I said. No criminal is bigger than the community. The community is very strong. If a community um, decides to help to secure, the place will be properly secured. In our your state, um, when we changed our approach to um, 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 <clears throat> then we change our security, um, architecture uh, approach that um, we are bringing an element of um, the, the the community, which we call voluntary policing sectors and volunteers. The local government have been putting this together. It's still, you know, something that is evolving. For example, now in Ibadan, they had um, the community heads that they call mortgages to get involved. And as this thing spread, the community would um, see themselves um, as having a civic ob obligation. So they won't be scared. And that is why we talk of voluntary policing sector and the kind of neighborhood volunteer um, personnel. Each of the local government has been going that, like I said, it's evolving. Maybe by the time it grows wider, um, these fellows um, are people that are that volunteer, that they feel that they are critical elements of um, security. No uniform service can do it alone now. And um, that is what your state is doing with the integrated security um, architecture of the concept that we've put up. Like I said, it's just evolving. Um, and I hope that by the time we spread it, people will know. Because you cannot do such a thing successfully without someone seeing people coming in, even the officers that are there, how many of them are there? Um, how much of, that's a facility that is covered with bush all around. Maybe some of the personnel too were, were doing a farming around the place. It is highly vulnerable. If a safe a place is vulnerable, that place is highly vulnerable. The road to the place is also not motorable and all those things. So these are things that, um, 
like I have mentioned as well, investigations that have been done before. Kogit has happened several times. Who is even doing this investigation? What lessons have they learned? If you don't learn lessons from previous things that have happened, that is why they talk of institutional memory best practices. How much of those recommendations, if they were, if anybody even studied them at all, the correctional institution is one of the most abandoned. Having worked in the police, I, I can see how they labor to get their work done. And mm. that facility in that for you is highly, most highly vulnerable. I will continue to repeat it. So what kind of collaboration is the state going to have with FD to ensure these things don't happen or at least they play a role? For instance, I mean, the governor talked about installing CCTV. So is that in addition to uh, perhaps monitoring all those other key spots? Are those part of things that will be coordinated alongside the federal government? Yes. Um, you know, they say, um, it's all true said that heaven helps those who help themselves. If a vulnerability tests have been done, I had uh, the DSS um, officer say, no, when this incident happened in Kogi, um, a kind of threat analysis was done. Um, what did the institution do about it? And that is why, um, like His Excellency Governor Shei Makide rightly said, if um, you are head of such institution and you've not done such threat analysis and say, oh, I lack this, I lack that, I lack that. There is no way the state would have known. And um, His Excellency that said it rightly, um, the immediate grading of the road leading to that facility, um, we would expect that the correctional institution, and I'm very sure the state can also support them in doing um, a clearing of the surrounding to give room for visibility. Um, how much lightning is uh, put there, um, I'm very sure um, the state, His Excellency, are, is supportive of all the security, the federal security institutions in the state. So we will look at that as well. His Excellency has also mentioned the issue of CCTV. It is not new to us. Um, if probably uh, a kind of um, threat analysis has been done and that has been brought to the knowledge of the government, maybe it would have been covered. We have a CCTV camera that covered up to Ubumasho along the road, you know, from Ibadan. It's not as if the four places have been covered, from Ibadan to Oyo Fiditi to Ubumasho. Um, along the line, um, will be added to the cameras and this will be taken as a priority um, as well. So with that, um, because even when the schools thing were coming up, I would say that oh, your state is one of the states, the few states, if any other state has it, the safe school initiative, that some schools in oh, your state are covered with cameras. It's evolving. It's not as if all have been covered. Um, with um, the panic alarm um, button, that from the state control room, you can see what is happening in some of the schools that have been covered so, so far. With a panic alarm button, which we alert the nearest um, security um, institution uh, within that place, the, the management of the school, and the state control room, including the operation bus and the police. So these things, it's not just rhetoric. It's not just that Governor Shei Makinde pronounced it. It is something that is in existence in the state. It's just for us to expand it. And um, it may be if all these things have been brought to the knowledge of, of the state before, because I started with heaven helps those who help themselves. Maybe all these things would have been done. And it also comes to the fact that most of the governors have been saying, yes, it is difficult for some people, for some of us to agree to say, um, decentralize this, decentralize that. Um, it is high time that maybe some powers and authority would be devolved. If the states are committing um, all these resources and we are making, when we have meetings, First time we say we've made so much billions of naira. How much um, do they, you know, plow back to the states that has been supporting? They use the state, um, you, you know, the state support system to do this. Nothing is coming back. We probably would be thinking of call it restructuring, uh, call it uh, devolution of power. Um, the federal government cannot be everywhere, and um, this is one key example from 
I have not been to that facility before. And I wonder if the controller general has been to that facility before. Um, all, all these things come to play. You see um, an observation point that is a, a Lord Lugard uh, type of observation point. It is the place is really vulnerable. I would expect that when investigation is conducted, we'll be true to ourselves and the officers themselves too, because that is also critical. When you continue to be on the defensive, you will not be able to say, this is where the shoe is pinching me on the leg, so that they will know how to address it. Rather than coming up with, these are the problems I have, we, we continue to be on the defensive, so that they will not say, oh, you are the one that caused it. It has happened. Mm. So let okay. us do things that will prevent other things happening. Well, the, the questions are, not, are still, you know, limitless. Um, one of the reports we have also indicates that a waiting trial are the only ones attacked. The, the, convict, the convicts are still intact. The female, uh, you know, inmates are still intact and all of that. And then the vulnerability of the communities, uh, the culpability, if any, of the communities, all those ones are still begging, uh, the questions still begging answers. But for now, we have to thank you very much uh, for being a part of our conversation this morning. Fatai Oshie, thank you for essay to the governor of Oyo State on security. Thank you for your time. We're back in a moment for more. Do stay with us.